listening to the Intellectual Network at theintellectual.com. And now, the Intellectual Podcast. Hello. 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 I'm not hearing anything. Are you hearing now? <clears throat> a little bit. Oh, there I am. The there volume up on your headphones? Yes, they are completely up. Okay. Totally. Well, those are pretty weak headphones. To begin with. Yeah. Well. Can you hear? Yes. Yeah, you're good? Mm-hmm. Can you get closer to your mic? Yes. There we go. Yes, I can. Yes. Sweet. Welcome to the Intellectual Podcast, episode number 26. I like to be in America. We are in America, okay, yes. We're back. This is, <laughs> this is the original bad boy crew all back together. The boys are back in town. Yes. It's me, Dave Dawson. Stephen Schwartz. And Eric M.D. Eric M.D. Yep. So uh, it's been a while since the three of us have sat down together and do, done a yeah. podcast. I mean, Steve, you and I did a few uh, together in the Philippines, mm-hmm. uh, but this is he's back home. Yeah. We're back together. Back in the old homestead. It's nice to be here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have to say it is incredibly strange to me being home because it's not as hot here. It, it, we are in a heat wave here in yeah. San Diego right now. But it, it's not as hot here as it was in the Philippines. No. But I'm sweating no. like a goddamn stuck pig right now. You, you, and I didn't sweat at all while we were in the Philippines. Do, do you want my sweating towel that I had? <laughs> <laughs> Your whoopee? My no. little whoopee. <laughs> no, one's, no one's presently drinking at the moment? No. No, no drinking at the moment. <laughs> no. Haven't had any candy. Oh, that's a good idea. Will you check oh. see if there's a candy in the, in the fridge? <laughs> Uh, I, I abstain, but no, it uh, it's good to be home. It, it, it was a it was a it was a good trip. Oh, it was a very long trip. It was an awesome trip. Yeah. So, um, Eric, did you follow us along while we were gone? Did you follow yes, the, the stuff sure on did. the site? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's pretty. So, what was your what was Eric's your determined to be like the minimalist answer guy tonight? <laughs> so, Eric, what was your favorite uh, podcast or? I'd blog? like to hear more about the. Uh, what are they called? Uh, woman boys? Lady boys? Lady boys. Lady boys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that one to Steve. Go ahead. Well, uh, well. Hey, did lady you do the crocodile Dundee test or what? No, um, didn't have to because it wasn't that blatant. Um, um, they they were rather pretty, but they still had the masculine Some of voice. them were pretty. Some of them were pretty. <laughs> Some of them okay. were just okay. drag queens. Some of them were drag queens and were, you're not fooling anybody, pal. Um, but... Uh, uh, on Boracay, um, yeah, their their voices were rather masculine. Say, you like me? <laughs> you like me? I go back you, with you. you. Yeah. Where are you from? Where, where you from? Where you from? Where are you staying? I go where back you with you. Yeah. Back to, you like me? Oh boy. God forbid you get drunk in a bar in yeah. Boracay and walk out without a woman on your arm. Yeah. Because they will follow you all the way back to yes. your hotel, hoping that you're too drunk to realize. Yeah, what you're and doing. don't try to sleep it off on the beach because they will wake you in a very special way. <laughs> So, so would that be a free experience, or uh, are they expecting payment? Well, Eric, nothing is free in that experience. <laughs> right. Not yeah. for you, anyway. Yeah. You're, you're coming home price. with something. <laughs> One price or another, yeah. you're paying a price. You're coming home with something. You don't have and to worry about uh, pregnancy with lady boys. Mm-hmm. Well, no. <laughs> no. I guess that's true. Uh-huh. Disgusting, but true. Yeah. <laughs> But no, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Aborakai was, was oh, gorgeous. It was absolutely, I mean, took my lady boys away. aside. It lady was boys aside, it took everything took my breath away about that place. Uh, it, just the scenery, the women uh, were just from around the globe. Just one absolutely gorgeous woman after the next, walking past. I was, uh, I some gorgeous was, men too. Yeah, I mean, if you're into like, that, you know, but, there were yeah. some not the lady boys, but there were some beautiful men, like yeah. Baywatch of the Philippines. Yes. Yeah, basically. Yeah, that was basically. And all of the really, really gorgeous women were always with these, you know, uh, ultimate fighter types. You know, all the big buff tan guys. Yeah, tattoos all over their necks. Yeah, I really wanted to get a tattoo in Boracay, but you I know. didn't do it. Um, Money was just a little tight at that point. I just at the moment. Hadn't yeah. quite been able to sell my stocks yet, so. <laughs> so tattoos aren't, like, less expensive, were they? Oh, no, they yeah, are. They are. They're definitely less expensive, but 
you know, I was on a budget at that point. Yeah, so. and and you can get pretty much get a tattoo anywhere in the Philippines. I mean, they had guys on uh, on tricycles that had their own little mobile studios. Oh wow! That so I, yeah, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but, <laughs> Talk I mean, about unsanitary. anything. Anything that they could fit on the back of a motorcycle, they were they were giving. They were selling. I mean, they had a. a they were selling you know, grilled chicken. They were. So, do, do they have yeah. regulations? Like, do you have to have a license to sell there? Um, um, sure. <laughs> um, I rode in a tricycle that had. Um, it, it's a very strange thing. It looked like every sing, almost every single home you go by had some little shop in its front window, um, like all over the country. Yeah. Um, if you had a, 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 a house that faced a road with any sort of decent traffic, you probably set up a shop in your front room. Yeah. Wow. And they were called sorry, sorry stores. Not that they were sorry. <laughs> why why are they called sorry sorry stores, Mom? Oh, it's a mix mix. It's a mix of mix of dried okay. Oh, dried goods. So it's like a little general store. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So there you go. You can get gum, you can get sodas, you can get baked you know, goods. Baked goods, breads, you know. Yeah. Pretty much, we, we saw 7-Elevens there. Yes, everywhere. <laughs> but these Sorry Sorry stores, I mean, they existed long before 7-Elevens came in, and they're basically how everybody gets their kind of general needs stuff mm-hmm. so that, they, can, that, they, go, that they don't need to go to a full grocery store for. You can go to your next door neighbor for a cup of sugar, but it'll be like five pesos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Actually, in Auntie Emma's neighborhood... We got thirsty and we were we were going to the market, which was you know out the gate and around the corner and down the road a little bit. And it was a, it was a week or so in, and mm. somebody's like, "Why are you walking so far? Just Two doors down, <laughs> they sell sodas over there." Yeah. They didn't sell what I wanted, but they sold sodas. So you, you walk up their front patio had a big big cooler uh, refrigerator deal, and yeah, it's like you know, you know, yeah, five pesos, five yeah. pesos, Coke Zero, Coke Light. And, so, you know, I've never. It's been a while since I've seen little tiny Coke bottles. So it was. <laughs> I had little tiny Coke bottles at the SLS Hotel Bar um, Saturday night in Beverly Hills. Oh, okay. Little tiny, little like tiny Coke eight bottle. ounce Coke bottles. All right. They gave me the Coke bottle and a little little glass. It was like actually a glass bottle. Yeah, glass bottles. Wow. I was like, wow. I, I thought I had to go to the Philippines to see this, but apparently I just have to go to Beverly Hills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could have saved you a trip. <laughs> that was a strange fucking experience. It's been a weird month because we went to the Philippines, and the Philippines, mm-hmm. let's face it, is it's it's slowly trying to pull itself out of being a third world country, but it is a third world country. There is mm-hmm. a lot of poverty in the Philippines. We spent a lot of time around a lot of just even abject in the poverty. Most, most beautiful area. And since I've been back, since I've been back, I've spent. And a tremendous amount of time in Hollywood and Beverly Hills. It's been freaking me out because <laughs> I went from one extreme to the other. And Saturday night, I was celebrating the distribution party for misogynist, which we've talked about on the podcast a bunch. Misogynist did get a distributor. Yay. Go, Michael. Yeah. And um, go me, too, because I'm a Bubble producer. Honey. Um so Saturday night we were celebrating at the SLS hotel in the, in the main lobby bar. And this is like one of those like crazy ritzy deals. You know, I pulled up with my Corolla and did the, uh, valet thing. Oh boy. <laughs> and I'm pulling in between like a Maserati and a Lamborghini and a brand new Corvette and, you know, just these gorgeous new cars. And, and thankfully I washed my car. So it was nice and shiny. But I roll up with my Corolla, with my, my dark blue Corolla with all the Star Wars stickers and shit on the back. And yeah, everybody's saying, "Don't park it near this one." <laughs> I'm like, "Can you keep it close?" You know. <laughs> uh, but we go in, and this place is crazy. Have you ever been there? Um, the uh, SLS hotel. I have never been no. there. No. Um, really ritzy. I think it's a five diamond hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you didn't ask me. Have you ever been there? Uh, no, I sure haven't. Oh, well, I thought that was a given. Um, but we go in, and the bar, it, it, the, the, the main lobby bar and restaurant is separated into three sections. The right-hand section was all reserved, but it's the reserved area is amidst, like, a weird art display area. So there's, like, all these weird, like, teddy bears and jars, like, <laughs> colored teddy bears and jars. Sounds like we're back in the Philippines. And weird, like, Mexican skull 
art and like, just all this then. random weird stuff. <laughs> but no, not at all like the Philippines. No. I mean, we're talking way <laughs> high class stuff. Okay. You can't touch the fucking teddy bear. It's behind um, glass oh, okay. and in a glass jar. Okay. Like, you know, a you can look at the teddy, teddy bear. bears in a jar. You, yeah, you could look at preserved this gorgeous teddy bear, bear, but it was it was in a capsule, like a glass capsule, oh, and weird. then it was within a glass case. Oh, okay. And they kind of looked like um, Grateful Dead bears, but they were like, you know three feet tall stuffed teddy bears. I don't know. I didn't even want to bother Damn. talking, but there was all this gorgeous art GQ stuff and whatever. And then the main bar is in the middle, and it's got like a twenty five yard long center table, high table. And along that table are what look like portals, right? As you're walking by. And when you get up close, these portals on the surface of the table are actually where they have LCD screens embedded in the table showing like old movies. Hmm. Wow. 25 yards of LCD screens embedded in this long ass table showing all these old black and white films in these little have a menu in these little portals <laughs> on the on the table Holy crap. and then <clears throat> all these like fancy tables along the wall with you know intricate you know antique looking chairs and you know avant-garde mm. just look to it right and then the restaurant off to the left and so we we sit down for this party and there were no tables available. We had to wait like an hour and a half to finally grab three chairs at the at the LCD screen tall table down the middle. And so we grabbed that, and I'm up there with uh, Laura and her husband, Adam, and JJ. And we're having a good time, and we're enjoying, we're drinking, doing whatever. Well, they're drinking. I'm drinking my Coke. And a table opens up along the wall, and we're like, okay, grab the table. So Adam rushes over to go grab the table. And as the people are getting up, the waitress, who's really hard to find normally, suddenly appears out of nowhere because this table's becoming vacant. She just like, poof, there she was. We hadn't seen her in an hour, you know? And she stops at him. She goes, um, this table, minimum $500 buy. Oh. <laughs> and we're like... And I was like, thank you. Never mind. <laughs> he goes back up. Never mind. He sits back down at the table with me. He's like, it's a $500 buy. I'm like, are you fucking shitting me? 500 bucks to sit at the table on the wall? He's like, yeah. I'm like, those chairs don't even look fucking comfortable. Does that include the food or is it? No, no, you have, you have just, to buy at least $500 worth of crap to sit there. Oh, so minimum so it's a $500, $500 minimum. buy. Okay. Now, the four of us sharing the tab, I bought, I picked up the tab for us, about 100 bucks for drinks, 120 bucks. Um, but that was like two drinks each. Yeah, so you just had to drink like five times as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there going, 500 bucks to sit at that table, and it was $160 you to could buy, my, buy my aunt a wheelchair in yeah. the Philippines, and she was struggling for that. I'm like, my life is in the weirdest place yes. right now. <laughs> <laughs> for five hundred dollars, what? Oh my God! I don't think for two and a half weeks I didn't even spend five hundred dollars. That's crazy, right? In, in the Philippines, the I idea mean, that you just, spend five hundred dollars just so you could sit at a particular table uh, in this bar. Amazing! It was bizarre, and, and they had the weirdest shit. They had these giant LCD screens, a couple different places in the main bar, and they were showing on them. They were rotating through a series of. Um, like Renaissance style paintings. And at first glance, it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, that's a Lord and that's another Lord and that's probably a Duke and that's whatever. But if you paid enough attention to it and you watched it long enough, the faces on these pieces of art morphed into baboons and chimps what? <laughs> and what lemurs. Your, wait, wait, what was in your Coke? <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I saw that before I started drinking. Oh, okay. It was fucking strange, man. <laughs> what was in the air? Oh, it was so, it was so bizarre. I said to Mike, I'm like, I'm like, what is with this place? He's like, what? what this place is just, you know, it's bars, LA. He's like, oh, that's right. You're from San Diego. He's like, I, I grew up here. So this stuff's just kind of like the way it is. <laughs> I'm like, oh, like, this place is weird. This is so weird town, pop man. culture. Yeah. So, well, but I, I you, you know, know, granted, we were uh, a few years ago. We were at the uh, at that one party for uh, Vig uh, at the uh, 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 film festival, and the after party. Was oh, at the at, standard. At the standard. Yeah, that place is strange too. I mean, they had this, they had like the people like in the glass 
well, rooms and stuff like well, posing. Well, it wasn't even a glass room. It was a, it was an aquarium, and this little Japanese girl in a bathrobe was sitting there, you know, on a laptop in you know, yeah, surfing just, the internet. It was living art. It was just living art, and I'm like. That's. I mean, how do you put that on a resume? What? It, well, I mean, I, modeling. I, modeling. <laughs> I, I looked at the. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I get it, admonished for my job, but looking at the internet too long. It's strange, and I guess I got to get used to it because, um, and and you, dear listeners, you're getting the. Uh, you're getting the gist of everything right now. I've been alluding to the fact that I was unhappy in my job for since the podcast started. Um, I have officially taken the leap. I left my job Friday. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. I am going to work for them occasionally on an hourly basis if they need it. You know, there's certain things. I was the VP of operations there, so there's certain things I need to make myself available mm-hmm. for for a while uh, in the transition. But but I have left the full-time gig. I had mentioned that I was trying to get onto some films and mm-hmm. whatever. I have been hired to do post-production Wonderful. on an independent Excellent. film called In the Mind's Eye. And, uh, we so should are you going to be going to... Uh, Shall I say it? No, um, I'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so I'm working on that. That'll be that'll occupy my time for the next month and a half, two months. Um, the podcast has just been taking off. Um, we had the the Oscar party, mm-hmm. red carpets that we covered. So I was up in LA for that for the weekend. Uh, I wasn't on screen, but I was up there producing. Mm-hmm. And then um, we had another red carpet the other night, and I had Josh Bevier um, cover the the carpet because the girls couldn't make it middle of the week um we got a bunch of interviews lined up for this week i'm going to be up in la on thursday um, to Mm -hmm. interview an actress and you know all this stuff is just taking off and the producer who hired me to work on in the mind's eye um he's working on a really big project later in the year i won't get into too much detail because it's all pre-production stuff but um the discussion right now is that uh they want to bring me on early in the process as part of the pre-production team part of the production team i'm hoping maybe i can convince them to hire me to be the second unit director um and it's kind of an action film so i'd be shooting action stuff and um and then hopefully i can get on the post-production side of that as well so will you be needing an assistant (laughs) (laughs) um just alluding to a hint well yeah you know we'll see how things develop uh Cool. They're, they're definitely interested in, in the team that sure. I can bring on board. Cool. Um, uh, the producer that I'm working with, um, his name's Craig. He um, he's got a whole slate of films that he wants to be producing over the next few years, and he's looking for a team of people to work with um, continually and roll from Very one nice. project to the next. So hopefully, this is the start of something amazing. But I wanted to point out, like December, I was miserable in my job. I was unhappy with all sorts of aspects of my life. In December, I made a decision that I was going to start putting it out there. I want to be a filmmaker. That's what I've always wanted to be. I'm going to get back to it. That was December. Flash forward just three months. Not even a full three months since I made that kind of announcement to you and everybody Mm -hmm. else. Um, I'm working on a film. I've been paid uh, up front for a deposit. uh, Payment on delivery of the assets that I've got to complete. Um. I've got discussions for a really big film. I've got discussions potentially for another film that might be shooting in the South later in the year as well. Um, I haven't been in this game in three years, and I was never in this game really up in Hollywood. So I make the decision, and bam. So I think it's important just, you know, when you make a decision, you go for it. You yeah, put it out uh, there. I learned. Good things have uh, come. And I'm hitching my wagon to yours. <laughs> uh, because after I have been podcasting because I like it, damn no. it. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> you're, a, right. you're a gravy train. I'm, you're a gravy train. I, I, I'm sacrificing my, my you know, self-respect for you know, on the air. <laughs> Telling of all my foibles and, and, and mis, misdeeds. Speaking of foibles and misdeeds, you've, yeah. you've had an interesting week. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> More what's hilarity the, from Steve. Here it is. The, what's the latest are, fuck are up from Steve? Are you back in the dating game? No. <laughs> no, no, no. no. He's, he's back in the hurting himself game. <laughs> I, Although be, I guess the dating game for Steve is about the same. But. Either way, either way, I'm a detriment to myself. So I'm a danger to myself. Um, so, so what did you do? Like well, you made it through the Philippines without any kind of real physical harm. I mean, you well, had a I, lot I, of I, mosquito bites, which got kind of 
in, a little a bit swollen. of infected, swollen, but not infected, not not know? nothing. Major. Did you have, didn't come back with malaria. No like dysentery, that. but uh, <laughs> gross. <laughs> uh, so uh, and but you just get home modium. and here at home, what do you do? Uh, well, uh, I decide I'm going to be working on my outer appearance uh, since I've you know started you know waxing and uh, <laughs> and I'm thinking you know what maybe I should you know get my skin tone down to something more less of a cadaver and more it's into been about the, a month you, since you waxed right? Oh, yes. are you tanning yeah. uh, no I haven't but I've been looking at, at salons um, I've been pricing places out like the Jew I am and um well, I thought, you know what, I, I, it's really tough trying to lose weight. I mean, I've been, I, even, I, I did lose weight uh, in the Philippines, but it's mostly sweated that out. I, I don't agree. No? No. No? No. I, I, I think you you lost weight in the Philippines because your portions were kept yep. kept under control. Okay. Well, you, portion. Let me ask you, how have your portions been uh, since you They've gone? exploded. Yeah. Um, Stupid. So, your own fault. Yeah. Well, I saw this... I have I have continued losing weight since we got home. I okay. just want to say. Well, you know, I, I haven't gained any weight back. I'll just say that. I haven't gained weight back. I have lost a total of 13 pounds since the fil- since before we left. Since b- before we left and up until now. Okay. You were nine pounds down when we arrived. I'm now 13 said. pounds. Yeah. Well, and I think you, have, I think you were retaining a little bit of water when we arrived from, yeah. from the flight. So. Yeah. That was really So mostly small. you've not gained since we got no, here. No, no. I haven't. Um, I guess the dysentery helped. But that will happen um, if you keep this portion yes. shit up. Well, you need I, to keep your portions under control, sir. Yes. Well, okay, I'm off uh, my soap. Okay, thank you. Can we go back to me to go. hurting myself again? Go. Thank you. <laughs> Did you set up a sweating tent? No. Uh, go. Go. Um, I uh, saw this ad uh, by... Dr. Oz will say, uh, I'll say it. Um, Garnicia Gambogia is this uh, supplement that oh, is. I've uh, seen those ads. I saw the Facebook post. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and it's how, you know, it's supposed to help in uh, weight loss. Curb your appetite and. Speed up your metabolism. Speed, speed up whatever. your metabolism, whatever. It's and, it's com- and it comes from this, you know, this fruit. Uh, this exotic tropical fruit. So I thought, you know, um, I'll give it a shot. So I went to Costco, got a big old bottle of it, and two days of on, being on this, I started developing a rash. <laughs> Thursday morning, I started developing a rash around my belt line. And um, I went, mm, that's a little odd. And I felt a little bit of a, of a itch. Uh, on the back of my head, I felt some like <laughs> almost like prickly heat on the back of my head. So I thought, eh, okay, I, I just probably need to use some baby powder. So just put some baby powder on it and thought that was it. And that just means it's working. Yeah. <laughs> the tingle means it's, it's good. <laughs> yeah. It's when it becomes a, an inflamed burning itch is when... Uh, Next I, thing I knew, I had a 10-hour erection. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would, that, actually, that would have been completely okay. useless. <laughs> stay on target. Uh, stay stay on, target. on target. Okay, Red 5. Okay. Um, <laughs> He's like Porkins. Porkins. <laughs> ah, stay on target. <laughs> um, then um, in the middle of the day, uh, while I was working, I noticed that my fingers started to get inflamed. Yeah, you kind of look like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man still. Yeah. Well, uh, He's this, swollen. Is, this is nothing. His hands are swollen still. Th- this is this is nothing. I can actually um, interlace my fingers now. I couldn't do that before. <laughs> um, I couldn't even close. It got to the point where around 7 o'clock uh, that night, I couldn't close my hands. I, I could barely grasp a, a can of soda because my my hands were so inflamed and also my ears hurt and I felt my ears and my ears were swollen. I looked at myself in the mirror. My face was swollen. Oh, God. My face were getting all puffy. My nose was, was getting all, all puffy. My ears were sticking out. And I'm like, uh... I went to my, uh, my supervisor and I said, you know, I think I'm going to go to CVS and get something. And he went, yeah, I think you should. <laughs> and, uh... I could I couldn't even grasp the steering wheel in my car. It was <laughs> I couldn't really hold on to it. I was just using my thumbs hooking onto it. And uh I go to the all night CVS 
and go go to the, the pharmacist and I said, "You got anything? Got any advice on what to do about this?" Is Lots it, of Benadryl. Yeah, no, he said, "No, the emergency room right now." It's like hitch. Oh, really? They, <laughs> were like, they were like emergency room. They were like, "No, you need to be in an emergency room right now." Wow. And I said, "Well, is there like a?" Kaiser, because I had, <laughs> I had Kaiser around. And they, they were like, uh, yeah, there's one in Venice uh, on Cadillac. So, you know, it's not really far, that far from here. Do you want me to write down directions? And I looked, at, I had my phone with me. I thought, <laughs> I'll get directions from Siri. <laughs> his, his addled mind is like, yeah, I'll get directions from Apple, the maps that are notorious for not getting you there. Yeah. So, and of course it didn't. I'm, uh, I'm an Apple fanboy, but their maps yeah, suck. Their maps suck. Um, they had no idea where what Kaiser was. The closest one they said I was in uh, Marina del Rey. It was saying in Van Nuys in the valley. It was the closest uh, Kaiser. Of course, you're so swollen, you're probably not even speaking clearly anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> can you tell me the reaction to this? I would have. I didn't even know my, my lips were not swollen, and I was I not. Like I was completely coherent. Because people understood what I was saying. Um, so, except for Siri. Uh, and so I went to, Siri sent me to one Kaiser office that was just a regular medical office. It wasn't uh, an emergency room. So I just said, find me an emergency room. Find me a, a walk-in clinic somewhere around nine one one so (laughs) it sends me it sends me down the street and of course it's closed so i called kaiser i took out my kaiser card i called them and they're saying well what they're they got a 24-hour nurse and i said well where's your one on on cadillac and i said well we can't give you directions i'm just at a call center um why don't you just call nine one (laughs) one And I said, well, I'm in my car, and I just you know, don't want to have to, the logistics of leaving my car where I am. And they said, call 911. <laughs> I said, okay. So I called 911. And when you call 911, I'm, I'm grateful that I was born white, because when you call 911, you're white. <laughs> uh, they come really quick. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm calling from my Prius. I'm calling from my Prius. We'll be right there, we'll sir. We'll be right there, sir. <laughs> we have a Caucasian. <laughs> you won't hear anybody of color say that. Um, so <laughs> I'm in a white Prius. I'm here. I'm on, the, on this corner. Within three minutes, I, a fire engine comes barreling down the road. <laughs> Lights and siren coming. I'm like, oh, dear Lord. I it was for this. you? Yes. <laughs> That's First responders, fire, baby. Fire, First responders. Fire department. Fire department. Time. I was like, I, was like I, I really don't need this type of attention right now. Oh my apparently you did. Yeah, apparently <laughs> they came out and they went, damn. Um, <laughs> you just sit right there, so we'll, we'll take care of you. It's like, yeah, it's just a little inflate. Yeah, no, sit. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you, you take, go? I'm always this puffy. No, did you take normally, the normal dose, or did you like say? Yeah, well, I took the norm, no, I, I was, normal. No, I went like three times no, faster. No, so. uh, no, I took the recommended dose, one pill with each meal, or one pill an hour and a half before each meal. Oh God, how many times did you eat that day, though? Well, <laughs> <laughs> three times a day, morning, noon, two days. Day. For two days. So six doses. So no, uh, f- <coughs> five doses because I, I still had my night dose. Well, it's a good thing you didn't take that nice do- night dose. We wouldn't be having this podcast no, right now. This conversation. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here today to mourn the loss of Steve Schwartz. We'll be having the we'll podcast Cottage. Have a podcast um, mama silence. Okay, that's okay, enough. That's good enough. After embalming, he did lose yeah. 10 pounds. Yes. <laughs> That's a weight loss through death. That's good. Um, it's the ultimate so, weight loss. So the, a, a, so <laughs> the model diet. <laughs> the ambulance finally comes, and um, the guy's putting uh, patches on my um, on my chest and my stomach. Thank the, goodness he didn't have any hair there. Yeah, thank goodness I waxed. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, damn, you don't have for... for for, for a Jew, you're awfully Jew. smooth. Yeah. You're awfully, awfully like, smooth, sir. Nice. Uh, you're, you're doing a little manscaping here? Uh, yeah, well, I just got back from the Philippines. And, uh, I was like, oh, you went there for those lady boys, huh? <laughs> and he said, is this a reaction to the Philippines? And I was like, no. <laughs> I told the whole 
you know, supplement shit. And Motherfucker, uh, I ate Balut. This supplement I, shit is killing me. I, I, I ate one of Donald Duck's nephews. And I, so, no, this didn't. I ate chicken intestines. Um, and pork intestines. And what, were pork the, intestines. what were the patches they were putting on your chest? Well, the, they were for the EKG. Oh, wow. Yeah, Checking my heart rate. The the p- patches all over my chest. And uh, they're going, dude, yeah, you, you wax or something? <laughs> 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 they're taking his shirt off. They're like, "Whoa, that's unexpected." Well, hey, you <laughs> Thank know, you for that. Hey, you we turn, appreciate it, sir. We don't need the razors. Yeah. <laughs> we, we don't need to shave him, and you know, we can turn the lights down because the glow coming off of him. <laughs> so the ambulance finally comes, and uh, <laughs> I'm like, "Well, what am I going to do about my car?" So the fire department there, got there first. There's a reason why the episodes that are the three of us are the highest rated on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. What your question was? So a fire truck came first. For a fire truck came first, and they uh, they were they were getting my vital signs and everything else. And when the ambulance came, uh, they you know took over and uh, put me in this uh, wheeled wheeled seat that laid flat and turned into a gurney. Uh, got me got me into the ambulance and they they took my car keys and they moved my car nicely enough so it wasn't in the parking lot so it wouldn't be towed and they parked it on the street nice and uh, tossed me back my keys and they said so uh, you go we got uh, three choices here you can die no of, of, uh, you're gonna love this Eric you know, love, I know this part they have three choices of emergency rooms we can go to UCLA we can go to St. John's or we can go to Kaiser on Cadillac and I went you know I was trying to get to Kaiser on Cadillac before I says well it's just three blocks from here <laughs> That sucks. <laughs> like, Let me out of here. Like, and they said, "Well, let's go to Kaiser then." And so they're, they're, they radio ahead, and they said, "Well, we're at this time of the night. We are closed to ambulance, but we are. We will take walk-ins." And I'm like, well, "Well, just drop me off." Can you drop me off? Said, no, like, no, sir. We can't do that. You're now in. Our, you're you're in now our in our care. liability care. <laughs> you're in no, our really? care. We can't just like, drop you off. You, they come there. You can't just like walk away. From well, them. they've already put an IV in my hand and uh-huh. in my arm, and uh, <laughs> they said, "Well, once we got you, you know, you're us. You're, you're our responsibility." And so, uh, <laughs> okay, Kaiser's out. Ripoff. See, they couldn't so, drop. They couldn't drop him off like you know a hundred yards down because if he like collapsed from there to the door <laughs> and died, but they'd be they'd be liable. You know? It's the yeah. closest location. Yeah, and they closest, can't take you to it. Yeah, because and that's they're, what your they're, insurance they're, is for. Yeah, well, they're, they're close <laughs> to ambulance for the night. So, <laughs> that's nonsense. <laughs> so um, St. John's. Here we go. So we we wound up going to St. John's. And uh, they were very nice. It took care of me. Um, How but, far was St. John's? Uh, it was about maybe 10, 15 minutes away. Did they do the lights for you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they had to. <laughs> they had to. Let lights the and siren. Time special. was essential. <laughs> Shine a love and light on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so this was Thursday. This was Thursday. So night. while I was enjoying red carpet events with first responders, you were actually... Being being kind of first responded, <laughs> being responded to. Um, uh, Steve. <laughs> yeah. So you get to St. John's. I get to St. John's, and they they take care of me. They they pump me full of Benadryl and uh, all type of uh, intravenous drugs and uh, and steroids to try to get the swelling down. Uh, but so was it a medical emergency? Yeah, they oh, said yeah. yeah. Um, and was it an allergic reaction to that? Yes. It was. Yeah, because I stopped taking it, and, and so it, I haven't had a recurrence of it. But uh, I've been on the medication for like four days now, and uh, the swelling has gone get down considerably. Uh, but apparently, you still can't quite clench a full fist. I can't. Can see that. I can clench a it lot looks, better it than it looks I'd, painful. It's not actually painful at this point. I I I, I rubbed my skin raw because it was itching a burning itch that just would not relent well and we've seen you we've seen you with uh, itches that you can't yeah. resist and well he you know, itched the hell out of his mosquito bites. Yeah, and i itched the hell out of my finger you can see i just yeah. ripped, rubbed it raw um and that was and the back of my head was just so inflamed and it became my legs started to swell up and itch and, mm-hmm. and patches on mm-hmm. my legs 
And oh, it was it was terrible. And they said, well, I think it's mostly inflamed in the areas where you have the most restriction of blood flow. That makes because sense. Your belt line uh, where you were sitting at work, you were getting the rash there. And I guess behind your head. Um, because of your fat rolls. But yeah. Okay. Maybe you just weren't drinking enough water. You should probably try it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> Eric's trying to kill you. <laughs> yeah, just my luck. I'll get the same ambulance. He might be wearing a Mickey Mouse shirt, but he's not a nice guy. <laughs> I used to do all the supplements, and I had a doctor at Kaiser, and he told me that uh, if you research it, most of that stuff, the people that do analyze it, they mm-hmm. find all kinds of toxins. There's no uh, FDA regulations. On no, any there's of not. There's, there isn't. And so uh, they may say it's one thing, did but it's like up, totally different toxins or whatever they can throw in that capsule. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did look up what are the uh, uh, side effects of it, and they did say you know you can develop a rash and have an anaphylactic reaction. And, yeah, that's uh, what you had. You may that's go what to I St. had. John. And uh, <laughs> and they said that if you have a sensitivity to citrus, which I don't. That, but I've had citrus before, and I've never had to have this reaction. So, mm-hmm. so I want to give you a class. So no, uh, <laughs> no. So Steve no manages. Blazing Steve manages three weeks in the of, Philippines with no major incident. No, no. his first bug week home, he almost kills bins. himself. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been a sucky way to go out, too. Yeah. It's hilarious, because the whole time before, leading up to us leaving, I kept thinking, God, I hope Steve doesn't kill himself while we're in the Philippines. <laughs> like, I, I just, you know, I was I was Falling as worried cliff. about Steve in the Philippines as I was about my mother. Uh, and, Except, and, and, and everybody who knew we were going, they're like, oh, man, you're going with Steve and your mom. Like, that's that's a lot of work. Uh, <laughs> you, got, you got your work cut out for you, you know, looking out for both of them. I'm like, I know, I know, I know. Hopefully, hopefully. You know, since it's mom's country, she'll be okay. Then I, I can just kind of focus on making sure Steve doesn't kill himself. <laughs> you, I didn't know I had to keep watching you after we got home. What the <laughs> fuck, dude? You mentioned that movie Hitch. What, what was it that caused his allergic reaction? I forgot. Um, I think it was uh, shell, shellfish, shellfish, or shell. peanuts, or something like that. Or it was something, something, they were something at dinner. Something. Yeah, they were yeah, at dinner. They, and, it, it, I'm pretty sure it was fish. Yeah, it was something that uh, he had an allergic reaction to. <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> what, what's up? <there>, what's <laughs> <laughs> He's drinking Benadryl with a straw. <laughs> Did you think about drinking Benadryl with a straw? I I tried. <coughs> I was going to do that when my lip went. Remember when my lip she went out of control? Yeah, that was crazy. That was scary. I I went to the men's room at work and pissed on my hands trying to get the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> trying to, trying to, trying to it's not a jellyfish it. thing. No. <laughs> hey, you know, desperation calls for desperate measures. You know? Wow, things I never expected to hear on the podcast. You're not Steve serious. says really piss he pissed on, on his hand. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't deliberate. You know, it's just fumbling. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Uh, no, I, I, Eric, did you miss us while we were gone? <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I miss you, just have to listen to a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we were pretty consistent while yeah, we were we, we tried to be as much as possible. Yeah, yeah we, were gone, we were gone, what, 24 days? Yeah. Wow. And we podcasted four times. Mm-hmm. So, I, how long do you have to be there for them to make you a citizen? <laughs> <laughs> Did the cops start uh, to notice you more? Like, hey, actually, uh, why are uh, so long? <laughs> actually, because my mom is a born filipino i could get my filipino citizenship if i wanted oh really wow yeah, yeah and there's no way they would take me no no <laughs> they'd be like fuck you yeah. uh, <laughs> fuck you <laughs> um no it's a good not trip. Even if, not even if you marry one of those lady boys mm, no, I, they want me to take them out of the country i tell you what though eric i wish i wish that i had brought you because i would have had a Field day watching you freak out. <laughs> yeah, I would. I wouldn't have been as cool no. as Steve. I wouldn't have tried that duck thing, that Daffy Duck egg thing. No. <laughs> the balut. balut. He did that the first night there. The first night there. Yeah, I would. I was like, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> we you still know, have to put the video together. Maybe yeah, we'll do that tomorrow. I mean, it was really funny. It's like a few days later, we went out to this be- incredible Chinese dinner, and uh, Auntie Emma's uh, boyfriend Bob. It was a Bill. 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 
uh, we told we told him that uh, person down here had balut and said, <laughs> and he's from Australia. Yeah, yeah, I've been here like thirty five years. I haven't done that yet. <laughs> yeah. like, they would have made it look like like a Cadbury egg, like covered it with chocolate. Mm. I might have fell for it. No, <laughs> no, no. There's no way to fall for no. it. Do you no, eat the shell or you just no. crack the you shell? You crack, crack the shell. You like crack the very top of the shell and you peel the top off. Is there a special? Uh, and then you suck the juice use. out. No, no, no. Like, is there a proper way to? No, 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 no. Well, I just peel away. In my blog, in my blog, I gave the five step uh, of eating balut. Oh my God. Step one is you <laughs> tap, 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 tap. Me. Like a hard boiled egg. Have you written a blog since we No, got... I haven't written a blog since I've been back. I should. You need to write a blog. JJ well, hasn't written a blog in a while, too, JJ. You know, well, you know, I granted I had a medical reason why I couldn't type. Well, uh, yeah, just I recently. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll give you a pass. <laughs> but I expect a blog this week. Yes. I wonder what I'll talk about. Um, <laughs> talk about how the swelling disappears. 101 Ways to Be a Dumbass by Stephen Schwartz. <laughs> At least you weren't on a date. <laughs> I went on a date. At least you weren't on a date. Oh, uh, were, I wasn't on a date. <laughs> <laughs> Shit that happens to me when Dave's not around by Stephen Schwartz. <laughs> Shit that happens to me when Dave is here. <laughs> oh, come on now. You you are rarely in life-threatening situations when you're with me. No, I just almost electrocute everybody in the hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> Between him killing the lights in the room and my uncle getting drunk as the podcast went on, it was quite a night. <laughs> I, I, I've never seen anybody consume that much alcohol. Yeah, he drank... Uh, An uh, entire bottle of Napoleon brandy. Yes, uh, like six-eighths of, th- of the yeah. brandy. I think of like that that, uh, that movie, what was it called? Like The Rooms, the or the Bell... Four Rooms. Yeah, Four Rooms. I think of that... Like the maintenance guy had to come to your room. You guys are podcasting. Your uncle's getting drunk. <laughs> like, like, what's going through that guy's head? Like, well, oh. I mean, in all fairness, I don't, I don't know that he would be able to tell that we were podcasting. I mean, uh, my little recorder was just. You didn't have headsets on. No, 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 no. no, no. no you didn't. Oh, okay. no. Uh, the podcasting from there sounded awfully good, considering it was just uh, my hundred dollar little Tascam audio recorder and we were using the built-in mics on it. Yeah. We would just it, set it on the table and we just talk. The only downside to it, it was just very sensitive and picked up every bit of noise in the area. So yeah, you could you, hear everything that was going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, not too bad. I mean, you, you honestly, got, those, well, those we podcasts in Kalibo, I expected Kalibo. to be almost unbearable to listen to and they're still no, pretty good. They, I, th- I think that's got, the best way to do a podcast when you're away from home so you can hear like everything that's going on. It's kind of cool. Well, you, yeah, it yeah, gave you the ambiance where we Well, we were in an upstairs apartment overlooking the the streets and we recorded those in Kalibo at like you know 12 at night and all that traffic noise was like middle Still of the going night. on that was just middle of the yeah, night the traffic. daytime was even worse was uh, uh, like, and that's crazy. not even in Manila that's not even on Luzon so with all the traffic do the, is there a lot of honking yes yes they do there's oh, they honk angry, at everything angry yeah. honking because um and I was talking um I'm going to be interviewing a guy named uh, uh, Elaine Washnevsky uh later this month and he's uh from Tehran and we were talking about my experience cuz he was at the party the other night and he's like he's like yeah driving out of the country a whole different experience oh, right I'm God. like I know right like I'm like I'm like I don't know what it's like in Tehran but you know the lines on the road they, they don't mean anything he's like no they really don't <laughs> is, like, there a le- is there a right and a left or n- there's a right and a left right or whatever left. But people basically just go wherever there's an open spot and yeah. are the string wheels on the same side as our cars yes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so there might be three lanes going one direction but there's six rows of cars yeah, <laughs> you got motorcycles the oncoming, in between, and motorcycles, and motorcycles and weaving motorcycles. in and out. It was f- and, and if there's any traffic, and if there's any traffic, there's beggars knocking on your windows. And actually, of- there wasn't as many beggars begging on windows, that, uh, banging on your windows as I expected. I expected that to be everywhere. Well, there was also it those really beggars only hit going, us a few well, times. There were uh, when we were in the more congested areas. Yeah, when you got we, to the really congested areas, yeah, where there were the beggars and also the the vendors, people selling water bottles and. But that was a blessing because, like, you were dehydrating. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that was, and for for some guy that was standing out in the middle of you know a, a city that was built two miles from the sun, that was some ice cold water that he had with him. I was, I, I felt really good after that. Yeah, he stores ice in his ass. Uh, well, thanks for that. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> well, I ate bullet, so yeah. I might no, as well. Eric, I would, I would be fascinated. I think someday down the road, what I want to do is start a travel show on the network. And this is years down the road when I get the network up to you know huge proportions. <laughs> 
But I want to do a travel show, and I want to send you as the host. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Because I think that would be a hugely entertaining and highly, highly watched show. <laughs> I'll send the two of you out oh, together. Oh, man. It'll be fucking hilarious. <laughs> On the road with Steve and Eric. <laughs> Let's see what we're allergic to. <laughs> Is Steve allergic to this? I'll send a medical team along with you. <laughs> but now, honestly, Eric, I think I think some trips out of the country for you would be really good for you. I'm going with, to with all the anxieties. Oklahoma. That's not the same thing. <laughs> with all the anxieties and everything that you've got, like I think going out and seeing just how bad your life could have been. You know, if you'd have been anywhere but here, would give you a lot of perspective. Yeah, it, well, I've, I've, I've watched a lot of that on YouTube. But it it's, it's, to not, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It honestly is not the same. Watching really? that stuff on television and seeing it in movies and stuff, when you just don't feel when it. The, the, I mean, the minute but I when you're I got standing off the there, plane, it's a different experience. The minute I got, got off the plane uh, in Manila, I got this blast of hot, humid air uh, coming right through the gangplank, and I was like. Okay, this is what I'm in for for the next three weeks, <laughs> and, and then when we get, got out of the terminal, finally uh, out on out onto the street, I'm sniffing the air. I don't know. And I went, "Yep, yeah, smells like the Philippines." It's like, <laughs> wow. I mean, like, that's exactly. It was like instantaneous. The second my nose smelled it, I was like, "Yeah, I remember this. This is what everywhere we like went. It was like a, it was a combination of you know car diesel. exhaust, diesel exhaust, and burning newspaper, and it was just." This heavy, heavy aroma. <laughs> and the, that one time uh, that it rained when we were at uh, Emma's house. We, we went out and played in the rain. We, out, and we came we in and they're like, what are you doing? doing? Don't do that. That's acid it, rain. Yeah, they're like, that's exactly what I'm like. <laughs> oh, it it, was? It's <laughs> acid, acid rain. It's acid like, rain. It's full of the smog. Oh, <laughs> I was wow. like, oh, yeah, that's a good point. He's like, go, go shower before you get itchy. <laughs> like, oh, wow. Um, he didn't itch. I didn't itch that much, but, you know. I'm melting in the rain. No. <laughs> but, um, um, I mean, I, I've never experienced a rainstorm like that. It, it just came like a downpour for like 20 minutes. And then it was um, like a monsoon, and then it went away. Yeah. Everybody came out. You should visit Texas. It's like that in Texas. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, when I lived in Houston and New Orleans. So New Jersey like gets to do that right too. Rain every day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was a good experience. So, yeah. Someday, uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do a travel show. I would love to do start that. I, would love to <laughs> I think the two of you on the road would be fucking hilarious. I'm more interested in visiting another planet. Well, you know, well, one thing at a I'm time. Wait, I'm, well, we're waiting for your mothership to come pick you up. <laughs> so am I. Dirt. Every dirt. <laughs> we're sending Eric to planet. Dirt. dirt. <laughs> That's his home world. So, um, Anyway, uh, so how do you feel being back at work? Uh, well, it's it's an odd feeling. I mean, getting back into the swing of things. You're uh, so happy to be back at work, you tried to kill yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what's difficult is I'm, I'm still kind of jet lagged. Mm. And what doesn't help is the time change as well. Mm. So we had to spring ahead. Mm -hmm. So I'm back to that feeling of jet lag, that little psychotic feeling like I'm not getting enough sleep. Well, I had that party Saturday night. Up mm -hmm. in LA, and I had to drive home. I had JJ and Laura and Adam all with me, and they all wanted to be home, you know. Mm -hmm. So we drove home <clears throat> in the middle of the night. Uh, we didn't end up getting back to the house here until about four thirty. Oh, so on the night that we lost an hour, I also got here like crazy, crazy early mm -hmm. in the morning. I was miserable on Sunday. I yeah, I was. I was fighting to stay awake at work. I mean, there were there were times when I was just. Oh. Yeah, Eric, you are enjoying the wonders of unemployment right now, right? Oh, uh, that is correct. <laughs> I, I am looking for another job, but I am enjoying the wonders of unemployment. Yeah, you I started doing... hiking and camping. Yeah, you were at Disneyland the other day too, right? No. Oh. Disneyland Adventures. I'm going to Oklahoma next week. Will you find a job there? <laughs> He's uh, you never know. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. might, might you not come back? Uh, no, I plan on coming back. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, when you lost when you lost your Michael's job, it was one of the things you talked about with me. You're like, maybe I should just go back home. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I've I've thought about it, but it's not really. I mean, I I miss my family, of course, and but that's pretty much all you miss from there, right? Yeah, family. it's not really mm -hmm. where I want to be. Yeah. Not where everybody wants to go. Let's if, go. If to I Tulsa. move, it'll probably be like Northern California, somewhere. I, I want something like green, mountainy. Well, maybe you should uh, contact Uncle Rick up in Oregon. Give that a shot. Yeah. 
That that is some really green. I bet you'd like them out there. The They're all weird. <laughs> yeah. Or Colorado, Portland. They're all Portland, weird. Yeah. I I lived in Oregon around just around Portland um, for four years, and it, green, it's, damp, it's rainy. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. beautiful. I, I found some. Yeah. Uh, TV show on Netflix. I can't remember the name of it right now, but it, it's Portlandia. In, Portlandia is that the one where they're like it's still 1994 there or something? Like no, that? Oh. <laughs> no. no, but it is. But it is still uh, 19, still 19. Well, I was there in 92, so it was still 94 there. So we're very progressive. <laughs> um, no, um, it's a nice town. I mean, very nice town. Yeah, maybe oh, something think that about you it. might might be interested in. I don't really want you to go because. The podcast is better yeah. with you here. Yes, better with you <laughs> then here. You've but just some, with that some... whole making me a travel person. No, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> you got to put your dues in though. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> just a little uh, tidbit about uh, Oregon and uh, the Portland area. They have more nude strip clubs per capita than any state in the in the Sold. union. Sold. <laughs> 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 Check. Here I go. Uh, so. They have so many that have to have like different themes. Uh, it yeah. just dawned on me. You're not working. Club? You should come up with me on Thursday for the interview. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Go hang out up in Hollywood for the day. I'll have to check my schedule. I think it's open. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me that it's going to be open. Uh, Unless wide, Disneyland wide, is hiring. Wide open. It's either Disneyland or hiking. I told him he should try and get a job at yeah. Disneyland. I mean, it it's would not wreck the experience. <coughs> I've, I've been looking into forestry services. Forestry services. They actually pay mm. like really good, surprisingly. No, oh, well. I think you have to have degrees for those jobs, though. Uh, yeah. There's always a catch. Well, <laughs> you know, nothing Oh, like here a, you go. A get a job. Forestry. Get a job at Knott's Berry Farm. That makes sense because I was watching some of the YouTube videos and the Rangers, they were getting all scientific and shit. And I'm like, oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, Rangers are all, yeah. they're they, all degree you, holders. You have to have uh, some sort types. of forestry. You have to have some biology. And, and Yeah, this chick was hot. And I'm like, well, slow down. She was like. Actually, because I, I do the national parks all the time. And yeah, there are some freaking hot <laughs> women who work as Rangers in the parks. Mm. At least when they're younger. When they get older, they all kind of get a little hippie. And... Yeah. yeah, that's what I imagine like a ranger being like. <laughs> I guess that's the best way. To just... mm. The food paw. <laughs> but yeah, I know Car- Colorado, man. The chicks in Colorado up in the mountains and stuff. Man, they're beautiful. They're always out hiking. You know what a mm. food paw is, right? No. Uh, fat upper pussy area. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> For those of you who would like the visual representation, <laughs> you're still listening to us. You're still listening to us. That, um, that's just Eric. That's uh, just Eric. And uh, if you want a visual representation, go to Netflix and look up Brickleberry. How did you oh politely say that? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So, anyway, um, thank you guys for joining me tonight. It's nice you're to have hey, the guys back. Great to be back. Uh, great to be back. Great to be back home having an American food. Um, not having a dried fish for every meal. <laughs> dried salted. Fish. I had adobo yesterday. You had adobo? Mm-hmm. 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 And for lunch today. Oh, so there was any, any leftovers? Fuck you, no. No. <laughs> none, none for you. <laughs> Jew boy, stay out of my food. <laughs> What's cooking right now? Um, so, uh, she's mom's baking some. Like Thanksgiving. She, mom's there. baking some chicken and scallop potatoes. Should be done by now. Uh, yeah, I mean, if it's it, yeah. it's eleven o'clock at night and I got here at nine, <laughs> yeah, we should wrap up this podcast yeah. and check because I think she may have forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Is she outside? No, I think she went. To well, bed. let's talk about my accompl- accomplishments real quick. I did conquer. Now we got Mount about thirty Woodson. seconds. I did conquer oh, Mount you did Woodson. The potato chip. Yep. I did the potato chip. I thought you were and also die. went to. You the- looked like you were going to die when you got back. Oh God, yeah. And uh, Elfin Forest, I uh, conquered that. Oh. And uh, that one, yeah. I actually got halfway up, and I started to turn around and puss out because of the, I think, maybe elevation sickness. And that and the sun was beating on me, and it's a little, maybe a little sunstroke. I'm getting out of shape. Garnisha can't maybe a little out of shape. <laughs> but I, I didn't puss out. I turned, and I went up, and I finished. Oh. Well, good for you. Yep. Congratulations. Try to do that with some Garnisha Gamboge and you. <laughs> See you. <how> well. <laughs> All right. But that's my thing right now is hiking. I want to do a camp. I think we should do a, a camp together, a hike camp. No, I, I'd probably get eaten by a small animal. We could, we could podcast while we're out in the middle of nowhere. I, yes, I, I'd be down would, for that. Let, you know, let's, let's try and find a weekend where we can do that. 
Yeah. Or maybe a week, day. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. I got to get some work done, though. <laughs> I got to work <laughs> on this movie. Um, but anyway, um, thank you all for listening to the Intellectual Podcast here on the Intellectual Network at theintellectual.com. And uh, if you haven't already, check out all the content that we have on the site. We've got an amazing wealth of content from red carpet events on our YouTube channel to the blogs. Steve writes a blog. I write a blog. JJ writes a blog. Eric, you should start writing a blog. Are we going to plug those pills that uh, almost killed Steve? Uh, no. no. <laughs> um, but we will plug the fact that you can get a free audiobook download if you go to audibletrial.com slash T-I-N. That's audibletrial.com slash T-I-N. And guess what? If you go through that and you order enough books, you get free books for every other book that you order. Oh, that's amazing. I didn't because know I, I, I've downloaded like three books already. I have three credits, so I've gotten a free book. I, I still have so two So it's buy one, books. get one free. It's sort of like that. I mean, the more, the more books that you download and you order through Audible, um, the more credits you earn. For f- more free books, so you sure those aren't just the the credit you get each month? I get a credit each month. Mm-hmm. I guess that's so. part of the subscription. Okay, so that's <laughs> why it is. So, so I, disregard what Steve just so said. Forget what, uh, enjoy your free everything. trial. It's a thirty day free trial. You have thirty days to download your first audiobook, and you get to keep that audiobook whether you continue on past mm-hmm. the trial or not. They have uh, awesome apps to listen to your audiobook on your phone, Android or iOS, either one. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have over 100,000 tiles to choose from. So I'm pretty sure you're going to find some stuff that you'll enjoy. Yeah, I've I've, uh, downloaded all of Chelsea Handler's books and listened to them. Let's not get into your fascination with Chelsea Handler. It's it's disturbing and wrong. Um, But yeah, go to audibletrial.com slash T-I-N. And, you know, check out the site. Join up with all the different discussions that are going on on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash the intellectual. And you can follow us on Twitter at the intellectual. And uh, we also have our sci fi Sunday podcast, which also enjoyed its 25th episode this week. And uh, cool. we talked about Cosmos. I just Ryan. watched that this afternoon. Yeah, very, very well done. Yeah. And um, I was rude during the episode. <laughs> sci fi Sunday also has a Twitter account that's at sci fi Sunday. That's Sunday like the dessert. Mm-hmm. And no spaces in the Twitter. No account. sprinkles. So, um, you know, come on, join up. Join yeah. the conversation. Let us know your thoughts. Let us yeah, know. Give us, going uh, on. give us some feedback. Other than Steve's an idiot on Facebook. <laughs> and I'm going to throw this out there. Um, throw a comment on the website using the discus comments section down below on the show page for this show. Mm -hmm. And on, let's see today, it's going out tonight on March 10th. So Sunday, um, that's six days from now Mm -hmm. Sunday, I will pick at random somebody from the people who make comments on the show page and I will give you a movie ticket. Ooh. Um, similar to what so Eric did. What do they have to do? Just make a comment? They just got to make a comment about randomly, this episode. And then you'll randomly and pick, I will pick at random from that group. And if um, you're the only one, comment. guess what? And, and am I eligible for that? No. no you're not eligible for oh. that. I will say this, though. I want to see 10 comments. If we don't have 10 comments, nobody and gets don't, crap. And don't copy and paste the same comment 10 times. <laughs> so, by all means, tell your friends to listen to the podcast. Yes. Let Make a know. comment. I want the comment to be of some substance, please, about the show. Yes. Well, if they tell their friends to make a <laughs> if comment, you can, then they'd have okay. less chances of winning. But we have to have at least 10 <laughs> comments for somebody to win. Right? Oh, so, yeah. something like so at least tell nine people. At least tell nine other people to listen to the <laughs> yeah. podcast and Mention make Kanisha a comment Kambodia. down below. So you can, you can log in using your Facebook account on Discus um, to post What's a comment. Discus? So that's the comment uh, generator. generator that we use on the website. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I meant to ask one that thing, earlier. I, I what the heck do is want, I'm seeing the, uh, the red carpet event, and you guys uh, interviewed uh, James Cromwell. Yes, we did. That was such a wonderful interview. And it was fascinating it was because... so funny the way he was fucking with JJ through that <laughs> interview. <laughs> I know, but the one thing that was just so... It just, I just lit up when he, when he was talking. He was talking about a movie that he just did with Jean-Vierre Bougeau. And mm-hmm. in Canada, and I watched that movie on the plane coming home. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know that movie. I might I just have watched that on the on the plane coming home, except my TV wasn't working on the plane. Oh. So. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's all good. I slept most of the flight home. Yeah, it's called um, My Own Place. I think it's called Still Mine. It's called Still Mine. 
Still mine. Mm-hmm. That's not at all like my own place. No. <laughs> Well, it, it's he's trying no, to build it's a cool, house. It's cool that you watched the movie. Was it as yeah. good as he said? Uh, it was excellent. It was okay. really, really a well done. Movie. Damn you, Academy, for not yes, recognizing. it was a wonderful. St- it's a, based on a true story about a, a gentleman and uh, an uh, elderly gentleman with his wife who's suffering from Alzheimer's, uh, living in Canada on two thousand acres that he owns and that has been in his family for generations, and he needed to build a safer house for he and his wife mm-hmm. because she you got one minute to finish this up. Go. She, she, she couldn't go upstairs. anymore, so he built a house and the government wouldn't let him. Be, the Canadian government wouldn't let him because uh, they, have, they have the, they have the, all of their bureaucracy and their red tape. And he just basically just wanted to build a house there. And he finally did. Okay. Okay. So I think the movie probably better than the description. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, cool. So thanks guys. And thank you all for listening. And yeah, 10 comments and somebody will ten get comments. a... Mention Garnisha Cambodia. Somebody will get a, a movie ticket credit. They yeah. don't have to say anything specific, just as long as they no. comment. Well, I want to know that they, they listen just to like the a podcast. Smiley yes. face? No, I want to know they yeah. listen to the podcast. Yeah. Mention they something. have to say something about the podcast. Yes. Not say, this podcast was good. You guys are lame. Yeah, no, no. fuck you. I don't yeah. know that you listen to anything. Like, except Eric that. has a really great voice. Well, that yeah. <laughs> Steve has a really sexy way of... No, come on. Of give us himself. give us a real comment down below. Ten comments by Sunday. Somebody will get a free movie ticket from us on me. So, And we'll, 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 we'll mention you in the next podcast. Yeah. So, well, or, well, next Monday's podcast, because yeah. we'll have another podcast this Thursday. So we're, we're a two-a-week show now. Ooh. Have been the whole time you and I have been gone. Yeah, yeah. That that's amazing that they were they were able to to take up that uh, take up the baton on that. And no, we took up the baton on that. I, I pre did all those before we left. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> I pre did all those before we left, and I set them all on auto release schedules. So, oh, that's yeah. <laughs> I worked my ass off before we left. <laughs> Okay. The one show they were left to manage while I was gone was Sci-Fi Sunday, and only one episode of that got out while I was gone. (laughs) I wanted to just you know praise the people that also work with us. No, but they did do the Chastity Bites uh, DVD signing. They went up and Mm -hmm. did that, and they did a very good job with that. JJ and Laura did a wonderful job with that, and Brian did a nice job with the little video promo. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen it, check it out on our YouTube channel, and. and then they, they, they prepped and got ready and did the Oscar stuff like, mm-hmm. right after I got back. So um, they, they were busy. They were doing mm-hmm. things. They, they, you know, but, you know, that's what happens. The guy who's driving the ship isn't here. <laughs> a few things kind of fell by the wayside. But Plus, you know, J- uh, Jessica and William are getting married soon, and they're busy doing all that planning. And so there's just a lot of things going on. So, mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, everything's back on a normal schedule now, and we're going to keep at it. And we're glad you're here. Yeah. Glad to be back. Cool. Thanks, Until guys. next time. <laughs> <laughs> really? This episode of The Intellectual Podcast has been brought to you by Audible.com. Audible.com has over 100,000 titles for you to download and listen to on your iPad, iPhone, Android, or really any mobile MP3 device that you might have. So if you're into audiobooks and you are looking for the absolute best, show your support for the intellectual by signing up for an Audible trial at audibletrial.com slash T-I-N. That's audibletrial.com slash T-I-N. And show your support for the intellectual network by signing up for the free trial with audible.com.